All right, here we are. Welcome back to Book Wave, the book club podcast. Today we're talk taking a look at recent events. I'm joined by Pat, Man, and Will. I'm your host, Rugmo. So what's on your mind these days, guys? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, COVID-19, I guess, if, if you want to get right down to it. This is the this COVID is spe- cast. This is a special episode of the Wave cast, the COVID cast. Corona cast. Pat- Pat's pretty excited about it, honestly, we're not- because we're all stuck at home now. Yeah, I wasn't leaving home that much to begin with, but, you know. <laughs> I, don't plan- I don't plan on leaving home. Ever again. It's honestly, like, if we survive it in the future, let this, let this be a warning to you all about not washing your hands. Or taking s- stock of so much toilet paper. Or not wearing gloves when you pump your gasoline. Or not covering your mouth while sneezing. Or having friends over for coffee after being told social distancing is in effect. Or go on spring break. Got so dark. And if you do any of these things, you're part of the problem. (laughs) (laughs) Not just the problem. You're going to become a meme. (laughs) Oh, and you don't want that. I I saw one little thing on Twitter from Theo Vaughn, and he just said, coughing is the new (laughs) N-word. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's been ridiculous, though. Like, we went shopping the other day, and there were no eggs. All of the eggs were gone. The entire poultry section was cleared out. Like, even the crappy pieces of chicken were purchased. Yeah, same here, because... um... I mean, the bacon was gone, hamburger meat was gone, chicken breasts were gone. And they were stocking, restocking the canned food and the rice. All of the pineapple pizzas were still there, though. (laughs) That explains why. Like, yeah. Nobody likes pineapple on their pizza. Even in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. Most stores and businesses are closed. Yeah, all the big cities got hit really hard, but like where I am, just outside of a big city, everyone came up north, started looting all of our grocery stores and dollar stores and everything else. Really? Yeah. Yeah, my mom works at a grocery store, so she hasn't been having fun the past few days with all this going on a few days it's been a couple weeks now just like the really bad panic in canada in a way hasn't been bad well the the great toilet paper crisis was like last wednesday yeah then they canceled the nhl and all the toilet paper in the country disappeared (laughs) yeah my um my workplace decided to take two weeks off and we're working from home. It's not bad. I'm actually catching up on sleep, which is a good thing. I bet. Because, you know, I don't have to drive down to downtown Houston uh, at four or five o'clock in the morning and then come back home late, which is good. Yeah, it saves you like three hours of commuting. Yeah. And also, um, I'm starting to think about some of the good things we can do right now, like take some online courses uh, or if you have children, just homeschool them and, you know, teach them what they want to learn, let what they want to learn, you know, on their own time and everything like that. I think it's something that we should consider. Yeah, there's definitely an opportunity to do some pretty cool stuff. But I think the thing is we were just getting over winter and you know, traditionally, it's like time to do spring cleaning. So people are going to be getting a jump on that probably all over their house, just really OCDing their home environment. The thing that they haven't been able to balance, that work-life balance, now they've got no work. They're gonna, yeah, that'll give them some energy. They're going to dust everything for the first time in five years. <laughs> I myself cleaned some sinks just this week and some toilets. Did a little bit of sweeping up, but a little bit of reorganizing, yeah. but nothing too extreme yet. There's still snow on the up. ground. Give me some time yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but that's the thing. It's like the snow's still on the ground, 
and now there's a pandemic and it's like it's supposed to be springtime i'm supposed to be riding my bicycle yeah some of us down here in houston are um you know still riding bikes out going on jogs it's a bad idea stay yeah. indoors yeah don't do that they should get a you know treadmill going <laughs> get a <laughs> treadmill but don't buy a treadmill don't go no. anywhere to get one no don't buy a treadmill no have one now already <laughs> Make one out of spare parts from your garage. And if yeah. you don't have any fancy workout equipment, you can always just stick to calisthenics. Seriously, if you have some stairs or even a single step, you can go up and down it repeatedly. That'll get you going. Jumping jacks, that's a good one. A personal favorite. Push-ups, squats. Burpees. Burpees. Russian twists. Planks. Oh, yeah. Supermans. Supermans. Mm-hmm. Get your yoga in. Grab a couple cans of something heavy and work those rotator cuffs. You know, straight arms out in front and then out to the sides. A deadlift with a can of paint. <laughs> yeah, deadlift your little brother, little sister, little uncle, little aunt. <laughs> jumping squats, jumping lunges, jumping switch lunges. So what else have you guys been doing to keep yourselves prepared? Are well, you done with the workout tips? <laughs> I think we covered quite a bit. That should keep people covered for, you know, a couple of months, however long wow. this lasts. Yeah, that was the scary thing, eh? The other night they come out and say, okay, now that everybody's doing self-isolation, honestly, it'll probably be months before we have any clue if it's working or not. Yeah, especially with the, you know, it takes two weeks for symptoms to show up and in that period of time, you can still be transmitting the virus. So Yeah. And plus, the virus uh, can survive on surfaces for a few hours to a couple of days. So if we just, you know, stay at home and not go anywhere like restaurants or any other place yeah, and just the... let it die down, we'll be fine. Yeah, most of the restaurants are switching to just take out only. But apparently they're not getting any sales. Yeah. Because everyone already bought enough food for three months. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be really tragic for some of these small business owners. Lots of these small business owners. Mm -hmm. Unless the government does something miraculous. I don't know how they could, though. Like, you see a lot of suggestions of the employment insurance system covering a lot of Canadians, but... I, I don't see how we have the resources for that. Well, apparently it's only, like, that's what the article said, and that's what Bill Morneau said, was it's only 1% to 3% of the GDP. 2% of it is the taxes that they're deferring for six months, and 1% of it is the 27, I don't know what the new number is, the 27 billion or something that they put together. Hmm. So that's crazy, if that's, that's right. Yeah, some people are saying that we are, here in the States, we are embracing socialism because the government is handing out money to people who are affected by the virus. Yep. We'll just see what happens. Yeah, they're all rolling out Andrew Yang's idea now. thousand bucks a month for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Replace all the uh, non-essential workers with robots and kiosks. Things to pick stuff up and put stuff down, flip stuff over and wrap it up. Yeah. And also, I think it's a really good idea for people who have been working in these job positions to think about making their own business. Like what? Becoming an entrepreneur. Doing what? I don't know. Oh. Just learn how to become an entrepreneur or, you know, take up another hobby like programming or copywriting. You just call programming a hobby? It can be. It's bold. Well, it's like anything. You can turn any kind of hobby into a career if you're really good at it. Yeah. Look at any musician on the planet. Yeah. This is true. I think now is probably a good time to join some sort of online forum. Such as? I don't know. There's all sorts of forums for all sorts of people. Bird watching clubs. Yeah, whatever you're interested in, really. Yeah, Reddit, you know, that that's probably pretty popular right now. Probably, he says. 
just a bit. I bet they're getting a couple extra hits. I haven't been on Reddit in a while, but I'm sure there's a lot going on. I do like what all of the apps have been doing, where it's like every single thing on your phone, almost to the point where I'm expecting a notification from my calculator to tell me about how to be safe in COVID-19. I think that's brilliant because it's like, no, ignorance is no excuse. If you use your phone, you know about COVID-19. It doesn't matter if you're going into Pornhub or Spotify or Duolingo or Minesweeper or email or banking. You're getting a notification about COVID-19. Everybody's going to tell you. Yeah, I'm just worried that that's just going to annoy most people. Because there's still okay. definitely the problem in Canada where people are just like, oh, this, this damn flu. Putting mm-hmm. the world on halt just for a couple of sick people. Mm-hmm. But the, the majority of people that it annoys are people that get annoyed by lots of things. Yeah. The same kind of people that, you know, blame the whole world for their own problems. Yeah, the people that are at effect, not at cause, not in control of their life and their emotions and their actions and their behaviors. And their thoughts. To some extent, their dreams, depending on how lucid they can get. Some might call them the NPCs of the world. Indeed. Running a similar set of scripts for an infinite amount of reactions. I was watching a Tim Pool's podcast the other day, and he kind of brought up something similar. He's just like, all these people that run out and buy nothing but toilet paper, like, this is proof that there's actual NPCs in our world. They don't have any original thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, outbreak, I need toilet paper. Let's go get supplies. <laughs> I do like that the psychology behind that is that it's a bulk item and people are just going out trying to get cubic feet worth of stuff and it doesn't matter what the stuff is, but toilet paper's big cubic feet, so they buy lots of it and then they say, oh, I've got lots of stuff. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, they're bragging about it. Yeah, well, it's not even bragging. It's just this weird, primitive, like, hoarding strategy that says lots. I need lots. I mean, you spend $5 on, like, five boxes of macaroni. You can fit all of those in your hand. You spend $5 on, you know, a a package of toilet paper. That's your whole arm's worth. It makes you feel like you have a lot. (laughs) Yeah, that's lots. (laughs) <laughs> get a bunch of that stuff and sit on it well for me i stopped watching uh tim pool and everybody else on youtube not because they're you know bad or anything like that or you know anything it's just for me personally i i kind of understand what the rhetoric is right now and what's trending to the point where i don't need to know anything more about it well you gave up youtube for lent yeah, I'm still giving up YouTube for Lend. So that's that's a pretty surefire way not to be able to watch anybody's YouTube videos. Yeah. And just replacing that with music and podcasting and some online courses. And I'm just waiting for the one time where somebody is benefiting from social distancing, isolating themselves at home. And I'm sure there are. What do you mean? Like them taking up uh, something new while they're at home, like learning how to meditate or doing some self-reflection or journaling or programming or whatever it is, cooking. How is it, how is it affecting their new life now that they're at home for the next two weeks? What are they currently thinking? Probably how long is this going to last? Is it going to be, is it going to end at the two weeks or just, you know, everything's going to be fine after that, and I return to work. Probably a lot of panic going on. Certainly a lot of concern, at the very least. Yeah. But yeah hopefully but a th- fair bit of caution. Yeah, but don't you think that it might reset their mindset more positively? I think I, it's I a feel- good opportunity to, but I don't, think yeah. it, it, I don't think events are enough to trigger change. I think people can very pleasantly watch as opportunities to change pass them by. You have to have an internal choice and drive to make that decision to want to say, oh, I'm going to take this time to be positive and learn a new skill. Like, that's how you interact with the world to begin with. That's, 
that's something that's learned or yeah it all depends on the individual and i fear it might have the opposite effect more because it'll just cause people to get fed up with everything and get bored give up easily you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of people binging netflix and video games and television I know the online games that I've been playing have been flooded with new users ever since the toilet paper emergency. Yeah, ever since TP Day. They'll go so, down in history. TP Day massacre. TP TP Brigade. Yeah. <laughs> First we use them to you know TP other people's houses, and now this. Yeah, there was a time when we had lots so much that kids would play with it in the streets, sharing it with their neighbors. Decorating trees in Halloween time. <laughs> in a most you, eccentric manner. Did you ever TP somebody's house or locker or anything? Are you a cop? Before? <laughs> no. That's what, that's what cops say. You can't say no if you're a cop. You have to tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> that's not actually... Okay, oh, fine. I guess TPing is not cool anymore, you know? Okay, we can talk about something else. That's fine. Were you a TPer? Yeah, I used Pat. to do that. Oh, you did. It was fun. I was playing video games. That too. <laughs> I was playing guitar and playing video games. But yeah, what else do you say? Well, we could talk about how some other countries are trying to handle this situation. I think in the UK, they're trying to just create herd immunity by like saying, all right, we don't care. Everyone's going to get sick anyway. Just get it over with. Everyone gets oh, sick and then we're all immune. That's a bold move. Well, that, that's, that's a genuine approach. That The big concern now is about <clears throat> third world countries, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if they get hit with it, it'll just ravage them. It's everywhere at this point. Yeah. I do think that the virus will die down when summer arrives. Former CDC director 16 hours ago. There's a long war ahead, and our COVID-19 response must adapt. Yeah, we all need to listen to Dr. Anthony Fauci. How many other sources have you found that are, like, uh, decently reliable? Oh, there's so many sources, man. Yeah, well, like, specific ones. <laughs> well, CTV's doing live updates for every single case that has been confirmed in Canada. Um, CP24 Goes app has a live coverage for the United States. So if you, any prime minister or president is talking, you can find them live for free. All of these news channels are, are making it very easy to access their news coverage. And there is news coverage 24-7. You just type in COVID-19 on Google and you hit the news button, you're going to get updates. But if you want to hone in on it for Canada, CT CTV and America... I don't know, the CP24 Go app was pretty convenient for me. Pat could probably tell me better than I could. I would just say, listen to the CDC. They update that regularly. So, what else is new? Not much. Prepping meals for loved ones that don't have the means to cook for themselves. Have you all done any, uh, some reading? I know, Scott, you finished Foundation. Yeah, I finished the first book in the Foundation series. By Isaac Asimov. You think you're gonna read the second one? Oh yeah. I have the the Foundation trilogy all in one solid paperback, so that's good. I'm like one third of the way through that big book, but I finished the first book, and it's really good. It's the it's the winner of the Hugo Award for the best all time series, so got some accolades too. <laughs> yeah, Neil and Musk recommends it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much the biggest science fiction series of all time, as far as I'm concerned. So, have we considered looking at a list of books recommended by certain public figures, like Elon Musk, for example? Well, I know we started this with the Jordan Peterson reading list. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Was there any other public figure that you wanted to look at? See what their book list is? Well, Elon Musk is certainly a good example. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's anybody else I like that I can think of. But, I mean, I guess lots of people are just putting up book lists now, right? So 
there's a bunch of people I wouldn't expect to have a book list that may have a book list because you just add a section to your website and there's your book list. You recommend books to people. Jocko Willink probably has a book list. Yeah, for sure. Joe Rogan might even have a book list. Well, I know Joe Rogan talks about books that he's reading all the time on his podcast, so. Yeah. He might not have made a book list himself, but somebody could have comprised the books that Joe Rogan has read on his podcast. <laughs> Did you hear that the Pope canceled Easter celebrations? I heard the Pope had coronavirus. Uh, I kind of expected that. And church is canceled. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, the Pope has a reading list. <laughs> what is it? The Bible? Uh, the, the Bible's the first on the book, uh, book of Matthew. Uh, book of John. Okay, so the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just loading the page. <laughs> Lord of the World by Robert Hugh Benson sounds fitting. 1907 dystopian novel about what he calls ideological colonization and the globalization of hege he he hegemonic uniformity. Huh. <laughs> Big words. Notes from the underground is on here. Okay. Yeah. Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, The Lord, The Return of the Prodigal Son, The Splendor of the Church, Memoirs of St. Peter Faber. This, this is pretty depressing. Yeah, the Elon Musk book list has updated, but the ones he recommended uh, recently when he you know, t started talking about it is The Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin, An American Life, which I actually have a copy of. I got it for Christmas. Hmm. Zero to One, Notes on Startups or How to Build the Future. Foundation, obviously. Life 3.0, Being Human in an Age of Artificial Intelligence. Lying by Sam Harris. And Acts of Love by Tulala Riley. Stranger in a Strange Land is on the list. That was a good one. There's a couple of books about Tesla. Yeah. The Last the last Line, which is about Winston Churchill. The Life of Winston Churchill. Lord of the Flies. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. So a lot of them that like are or should be on our list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking up Jocko's right now. Yeah, some of his recommendations are mostly just war books. Yeah, that's what he talks about on his podcast most of the time. And he has Blood Meridian. I've read that. Well, stay six feet or more away from people. Is it six? Is that the number? Yeah. If you have a cough, make it a hundred. Just <laughs> stay in your house. <laughs> Don't leave your house. Just Learn do. to love oatmeal again. Don't leave your house. <laughs> Take up a new hobby. Exercise more. Distract yourself from the fact that you're in your house. That's all I got. Check us out at bookwave.club. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I guess that's it. And if you have any recommendations for any other books that you want us to check out, let us know. And the next video uploaded will be on Ernest Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises. Until next time, may the force be with you. Or equal to mass times acceleration. Drink more Corona. <laughs>